This video shows the use of a pulse oximeter in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. Severe COVID-19 most notably affects the lungs. Measuring oxygen saturation is essential for deciding when to use precious oxygen resources during the pandemic. A pulse oximeter is used to measure oxygen saturation and can help identify severely ill patients who should be hospitalized and receive oxygen therapy. Pulse oximetry can also be used to adjust oxygen treatment and promote safe oxygen conservation practices. Please note, available oxygen, flow rates, and administration practices will vary according to local protocols and resources. Make sure you know what kind of oxygen therapy is available in your institution, how it can be delivered, and what local guidelines are in place. Part one, do you need to measure your patient's oxygen saturation? You will need to decide whether your patient should have their oxygen saturation measured. All symptomatic patients presenting for medical evaluation should have vital signs, including oxygen saturation checked. COVID-19 symptoms can vary widely among different patients. Consider these five questions to help you assess your patient for respiratory illness. Does your patient have a fever? Does your patient have a cough or difficulty breathing? Does your patient have an increased respiratory rate? Does your patient have any emergency signs such as obstructed or absent breathing, severe respiratory distress, central cyanosis, shock, coma, convulsions, or uncontrolled vomiting? Is your patient being admitted as an inpatient? Fever. Any known fever over the last 14 days is an indication to measure oxygen saturation. Cough or difficulty breathing. Any cough, difficulty with breathing, or shortness of breath over the last 14 days is an indication to measure oxygen saturation. Difficulty breathing can be any abnormal breathing pattern, including but not limited to breathing too fast, too slow, too deep, noisy breathing, labored breathing, or any pain or discomfort associated with breathing. Increased respiratory rate. An increased respiratory rate is an indication to measure oxygen saturation. This is a little more complicated than the other reasons to measure saturation, as normal respiratory rate varies with age. Let's spend a little time here reminding ourselves of abnormally high respiratory rates in different age groups. In adults and children 16 years of age and older, a respiratory rate of 22 breaths per minute or more is abnormal. In children 5 to 15 years of age, a respiratory rate of 30 breaths per minute or more is abnormal. In younger children from one to five years of age, a respiratory rate of 40 breaths per minute or more is abnormal. In infants two to 11 months of age, a respiratory rate of 50 breaths per minute or more is abnormal. In neonates and very young infants up to two months of age, a respiratory rate of 60 breaths per minute or more is abnormal. Any patient who has an increased respiratory rate should have their oxygen saturation measured with a pulse oximeter. Emergency signs. Emergency signs are an immediate indication for admission and resuscitation, including administering oxygen therapy and possibly managing the patient's airway. Resuscitate, administer oxygen, and measure the patient's oxygen saturation if any of the following signs are present. Severe respiratory distress. Signs of severe respiratory distress can include obstructed or absent breathing, head nodding in younger children, nasal flaring, grunting, usually in younger children, tracheal tugging, intercostal retraction, or inward pulling of the skin between the ribs during inspiration, and deep lower wall chest indrawing, or inward pulling of the skin below the ribs during inspiration. Other emergency signs include poor perfusion or weak pulse, which is a sign of shock, coma, convulsions or seizures, or vomiting all food and drink and medicines. If your patient is being admitted to the hospital with suspected or confirmed COVID-19, or for any other respiratory illness, use a pulse oximeter to check oxygen saturation, along with vital signs. For patients who are under simple observation and do not have low oxygen levels, these should be checked at least every six to 12 hours, depending on illness severity. For symptomatic patients with COVID-19 who are not hospitalized but have risk factors for progression to severe disease, consider pulse oximetry monitoring at home every 8 to 24 hours as part of a package of care, including patient and provider education and appropriate follow-up. Part 2. How to Measure Oxygen Saturation 
When using a pulse oximeter to measure oxygen saturation, remember to use the correct probe for your patient. Young children in particular need appropriately sized probes. It may be difficult to get a reading in critically sick patients. We recommend two strategies to make it easier to measure the oxygen saturation in younger children below two years of age. First, consider the big toe, as this allows the child to sit comfortably in the caregiver's lap and be comforted. Second, you may allow a breastfeeding child to feed during the measurement to improve cooperation. You may have to wait 30 to 45 seconds for the pulse oximeter to display the pulse rate and consistent oxygen saturation readings. If your patient is very unwell and you cannot get a reading, administer oxygen and call for help immediately. Part three, how to use oxygen saturation to decide next steps. You have now used a pulse oximeter to measure the oxygen saturation of your patient. Depending on the result, you will decide to administer oxygen or plan how to monitor your patient without oxygen therapy. If the patient's oxygen saturation is 94% or higher and they do not have any emergency signs, you do not need to administer oxygen at this point. In this case, you should follow local protocols for COVID-19 testing and isolation. Remember, all inpatients should have their oxygen saturation measured with their vital signs at least every six to 12 hours. Severe and critically ill patients may require more frequent or continuous pulse oximetry monitoring. Let's quickly review oxygen saturation goals. Low oxygen levels can be harmful or even life-threatening, but unnecessarily high oxygen levels can also cause harm and waste precious oxygen supply. In hemodynamically stable, non-pregnant patients without emergency signs, oxygen should be provided for saturations below 90% and maintained at less than approximately 96 to 99%. In pregnant patients, oxygen saturation should be kept 92 to 95%. And in patients with signs of multi-organ failure or emergency signs, oxygen saturation should be kept at or above 94%. The optimal oxygen saturation target may be different in different places and will ultimately depend on local resources and protocols. If the oxygen saturation reading is less than 90%, administer oxygen via nasal prongs or face mask. Patients presenting with severe hypoxemia may require higher levels of support immediately. During initiation of oxygen therapy, check the saturation and titrate oxygen flow every two to five minutes until SpO2 goal is reached. The next oxygen therapy decision is made depending on the outcome of 15 minutes of oxygen therapy. After 15 minutes of oxygen therapy, check the oxygen saturation again with your pulse oximeter and check whether the reading is 90% or above or at your goal. If the oxygen saturation is 90% or above, Continue to adjust oxygen therapy for your saturation goal and monitor the patient. If oxygen saturations rise to 96% or higher, reduce the oxygen flow rate. Oxygen saturation and vital signs should be measured at least every six to eight hours whilst oxygen therapy is ongoing. Sicker patients may require much more frequent checks or even continuous saturation monitoring, especially early in the course of their care until stabilized. If the oxygen saturation remains less than 90%, respiratory support should be maximized. Oxygen flow should be increased where possible. Other measures include using a face mask with an oxygen reservoir, high flow nasal oxygen, or positive airway pressure devices. Once again, oxygen saturation should be checked every two to five minutes when changing devices or flow rates. If the oxygen saturation is 90% or above, continue maximal oxygen therapy and monitor the patient. In awake, spontaneously breathing patients who require oxygen therapy, prone positioning or lying on your stomach may improve oxygenation. If the oxygen saturation is less than 90% on a face mask with reservoir or equivalent oxygen therapy, consider referral for ICU admission and escalate respiratory support where devices such as high flow nasal oxygen or continuous positive airway pressure devices are available. Oxygen saturation should ideally be monitored continuously in severely or critically ill patients and regular evaluation should be performed for emergency signs or indications for airway management and mechanical ventilation. Oxygen saturation measurement is one of the best tools you have to decide when to use and how to maximize precious oxygen resources during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
We thank you for all that you are doing for your patients during these difficult times.